Hi, I'm Ben, and I want to talk to you about sports cramps. These cramps are the kind that result in a severe myoclonic response that literally becomes self-perpetuating through the uh, sympathetic nervous system. So if you were to try to massage them out, you just make them worse. Just the thought of touching them makes them worse. You get this feedback loop that just keeps driving them more and more into pain. In simple terms, I'm referring to upper leg muscle cramps, which are usually caused by vasoconstriction and a neural chaos from the inflammation and being overworked of the muscles. Now, I'm not referring to the run-of-the-mill garden variety of cramps that we call Charlie Horse, where maybe somebody kicked a soccer ball into you or you, somebody need you or something like that. That's something different. I'm talking about the kind of exquisitely painful cramp that's so bad if you're trying to sleep at night and it attacks you, it'll drop you on the floor in a heartbeat. Maybe you're in a race, you're competing, you're yards from the finish line, and this will stop you dead still. You can't move because of the pain. The worst thing is if they occur when you are driving home, you're on the interstate, a lot of traffic, everybody's going 70 miles an hour, you get one of these cramps, that's scary and it's not safe. So I want to talk to you about things that you can do. Now I know you've already tried things that your doctors recommended like magnesium and uh, quinine tablets and so forth. And I know you already know about warming up and those sort of things, so we're not going to waste time on that because I'm talking about the really bad type of cramps that I would have paid the king's ransom for if I'd known what I'm about to tell you. Uh, I'm talking about cramps and how to stop them and how to prevent them. Okay, if you have one of these cramps that occurs after a meet, then you can usually do something preventive so you don't get another one while you're driving home. And that is, you can make a compression uh, covering. Take an old compression stocking, uh, measure it so you cut it off about where the knee is. Now I know that's a little longer. You cut it off there and uh, here's a little tip. Take scissors and cut through notches about every inch and a half around it. Otherwise it's going to really constrict and hurt. So what you do is, before you drive home, or if you, at night time, that's when I always would get some horrible cramps, put this thing on, and you are ready to go. Now, this is going to stop the neural activity that genera generates in this zone here. This is where you have the inflammation, you have your vascular constriction, you have all sorts of complex physiological processes, processes going on, and this will stop that. At least it has for me. Now the explanation can get quite lengthy, we won't go into that. The other thing you need to know is when you put this compression stocking on, you, you need to have some way to keep it fastened or it's going to curl up and roll down over your knee. Now I use a product called It Stays. It's a roll-on thing. You can get it for about seven dollars, a, a little container of it. Or you may have something else that'll work fine. But the point is, you put this compression stocking on, and at least for me, it has stopped any uh, cramps from developing. Okay, what about the situation where you have a cramp during a meet, particularly when you're yards from the finish line? Uh, I'm a little reluctant to bring this up, but what works for me, and I've only tried it a couple times, and it's worked great, is to take sublingually NitroQuick, 0.4 milligrams. That's 0.4, just a tiny amount. There's probably a dozen of them in this little bottle. I only take half of one, put it under your tongue, and within 60 seconds you've uh, dilated your veins, and I was good to go. Now that's just a little trick I've learned fairly recently. 
but I would uh, caution you, you need to talk to your doctor because uh, nitroquick being nitroglycerin can uh, cause lowering of blood pressure. So if you're on antihypertension medicine, something to lower the blood pressure, you don't want it to go even lower. Although I can't imagine during a meet you're going to have low blood pressure, but whatever, you need to talk to your doctor. Of course, he's going to say, oh, no, you can't use that. It's not a label of use. But anyway, I'm just telling you what, what worked for me. Now, if you do use something like nitroglycerin tablets, before you ever get out on the meat or the circuit, take a half a tablet, put it under your tongue, and get acclimated to it. And you may need to do this two or three times. The first time that you try it, you're going to find you're going to, you may get flushing of the face, your veins uh, engorged with blood, you feel you know, like you've got a lot of blood pressure there. You may get a headache. You know, that's normal, and you may think, oh, it's a crazy idea. Second time you take it, it's not going to be too bad. Uh, when I took my last one, I just, it was, I think, the third time I'd ever taken it. Didn't notice a thing at all. Of course, <laughs> the, the cramp was starting to cause so much pain. I mean, you could have shot me with a gun. It would have felt nice. But, uh, no, seriously, I, I joke about it, but... Uh, these uh, medications need to be taken seriously. So you need to, to make sure that you know what you're doing or at least feel that way. So if it goes south on you, brother, uh, I told you not to do it. Anyway, I hope these give you some uh, ideas for possibly heading off this type of cramp because there is no pain in a cramp worse than the kind that I'm talking about. So if this has been meaningful for you, then it's been meaningful for me. Now go out and have a good day. Do some exercises, you know, get those trials in, get the hours in, and don't worry about the cramps. Have a nice day.